As of February 2022, we launched our hosting dashboard. We went from a marketplace of 3,000 to now 50,000 on our dashboard. Just within almost a year and a half. A year and a half. Why is this jump happening? People are really wanting to share their voice. How else a platform like Podio can help a podcaster like me, for example, to become more successful? I think companies need to be helped, need to be guided in terms of how can they integrate podcast into their content and marketing strategy. The ecosystem is there in place to mm -hmm. help podcasters to start, continue and grow. Hello YouTube and LinkedIn and we're having Lama Mastery today in our studio who is the sales director from a largest hosting and listening uh, platform for Middle East and Africa, Podio. And I'm very happy to talk podcasting today. Hi Lama, thank you very much for making it to our studio today. Uh, thank very you. excited to talk to discuss podcasting in the Middle East with you. This thank morning. You. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. We are excited to be here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So big expectations, right? Very. 2023 is going to bring a lot of changes. I'm, 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 I'm actually uh, so thrilled that we managed to sort of to capture you in this um, um, sort of state, right? In these expectations. And uh, yeah, congratulations. Thank you very much. So Lama, to start our conversation about podcasting, uh, I'd like uh, to uh, ask you to probably speak about Podio a little bit. And since we, uh, we do have a lot of players in the ecosystem of podcasting globally and in the Middle East uh, as well, so I'd like you to give a little bit of a brief about who are who, like who is Podio, who's your sort of global benchmark, mm -hmm. Uh, so what are other players in this industry and how do podcasts can get advantage uh, out of this ecosystem? Thank you. I mean, great question. I think there's a lot of unclarity currently in the market. Sometimes people comparing us to a production company. But what Podio is, um, first off, is a hosting dashboard. So for you, let's say to have a website, um, you'd have to first purchase a domain link. Right. And yeah. you have to, let's say, go to godaddy.com and you'd get a website link and then you have to host it and pay server fees. Think of the same concept for podcasting. Instead of the HTTPS, you need to have RSS and the RSS is then caught by different listening apps. Yeah. So Apple podcast, they have invested, they invented the RSS technology, yeah. but they do not have a hosting dashboard. They are a listening app. That means they catch the RSS. Um, you have things like a Google podcast, also not a hosting dashboard, only a listening app, which means they catch RSS. If I wanted to kind of compare it globally, think of it when you have an HTTPS link, a website link, then no matter if it's Safari, it's Internet Explorer, right? If it's uh, Google Chrome, if you enter the website, it will immediately show. You are not trying to teach each different um, hosting, let's say, website browser to learn about your website. So think of that kind of concept when it comes to listening apps. And so listening apps would be Spotify is a listening app, but they also have hosting. So I'll go into that. And Rami is a listening app, which they catch the RSS. Yeah. Apple Podcast is a listening app. Uh, Google Podcast is a listening app. Deezer is a listening app. Now, if we were taking uh, Spotify and Podio, uh, we both have hosting, but we have a completely different business model. Um, so for Spotify, their main aim is to, similar to Anrami in the region, is to purchase content and put it behind the payment wall. So subscription, right. you know, you know, uh, yeah. listenership behavior. Uh, whereas Podio, our listening app is for free. Beyond that, our listening app is the first app globally that you can record your podcast and listen to the podcast as well. any podcast, not just yours. So right. we have really listened into the market, listened to the needs, what are the issues, 
and we've seen that it takes uh, podcasters up to seven different platforms mm -hmm. to go to, um, basically to start a podcast. From a hosting perspective, from a listening app perspective, from add-on services perspective, to um, monetization perspective. So these three kind of funnels. Definitely. So that's what we're addressing. So we're really thinking not just obviously Middle East, we're here because we're Arab first, right? We yeah. started here. But our um, go-to-market strategy is really a global reach. Uh, it's a global um, problem that we're solving. And honestly, it's it's been really, really great. So, uh, so first of all, you are, as you mentioned, you're Arabic first platform mm -hmm. and you're audio first platform. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so how many uh, users or subscribers are on your hosting platform currently? So if I could give you a bit of a landscape of how it's been. So yeah. as of uh, February of 2022, we've launched our hosting dashboard. And in the last 10 years, so from uh, right before 2022, we looked at the market. There were only 3000 Arabic podcasts in the Middle East in the last 10 years. That's right. So as of February 2022, we launched our hosting dashboard. We went from a marketplace of 3,000 to now 50,000 on our dashboard. Just within? Almost a year and a half. A year and a half. Can you, can you sort of explain it in any, in any way? Why is this jump happening in the last year? I mean, the creator economy in, in the Middle East, uh, people are really wanting to share their voice. One, two, we actually... You know, it was our, it was not just our MVP, but it, it showed that the market needed such a product. They wanted a hosting dashboard in Arabic, right? So that is one differentiator. They wanted a hosting dashboard that had add-on services, which are, we have uh, post-production services, curation services, uh, graphic design services. So a lot of kind of things that sometimes uh, content creators, they do not know where to go, right? To you know, um, to solve. And at the same time, also very good price adaptability and transparency. So that's what we offer them. Right. And if we, if we look at your, let's say users or subscribers, how do you, how do you call your audience, by the way, users or subscribers? Uh, users. Users. So, so they are creators. the users of your uh, platform. Who do yeah. they represent? Who are they? Can you just uh, say, course. and who, uh, so are they representing companies, individual creators, and how have they changed over, let's say, I don't know if you've got the data over the last year or maybe over a couple of years. So I think um, in the past, let's say two years, um, at least as far as I've, I've been here in, at Podio, um, I've really looked at the creator economy from an individual. Um, so a lot of individual podcasters had started before and companies were still wary on, should I start a podcast? How important? I'm hearing the wave. Same thing with agencies. And so we have been educating the market for the past two years in terms of brands, in terms of uh, global agencies, advertising agencies on the importance and the benefits of podcasting. So we've had a wide range of clients. We've had publishing companies, a very large publishing companies um, that have seen a great, uh, basically, improvement in engagement when it comes to an audio version of their article. And that has really drove uh, very high numbers for them. And they're, they're basically coming again and again. Yeah. So um, that's from a, from a, let's say, publisher's perspective. Yeah. From any client, I mean, podcasting, you know, at the end of the day is an arm of marketing, right? It's the personalized and in-depth uh, analysis of what a brand wants to convey. So it's really up to the brand strategy if they want to be more, I'll be just front faced, right? I'll share some snippets maybe on Instagram, on LinkedIn, uh, on Discord, or depending on their strategy, right? On Twitter, or they'd say, you know what? I'd like to give more of a personalized approach about what we're doing, what we're solving. Maybe that can engage um, better, uh, let's say clients that they'd be engaged and you know, they'd listen into the intel that we're sharing. So it just depends on their content strategy. Uh, but I really see from consulting companies to uh, publishing uh, companies. Uh, I see hospitals, I see gyms, uh, I see um, you know, consultants um, who are basically doing, let's say, mental health uh, consultancies yeah. and you know, all the uh, social society and culture ones. 
And of course you have your production companies, you know, the likes of South, the likes of Rising Giant Network, yeah. Kerning Cultures, who end up are focusing on content production yeah. for, let's say, a certain segment, right? Um, for, let's say, whether it's sports, whether it's fiction, and that is their business model. So, you know, you have different clients, obviously. Uh, each one has a different need, you know, some need more of a... Um, iframe widget, uh, some need more a white label, right? Because yeah. they're large media agencies and they'd like their own white label apps. So yeah. really we're, we are a tech company in the end of the day and yeah. we're trying to solve whatever problems. And the nice thing is because we are, you know, we're almost, you know, 50, a team of 50 people, right? Right. And so we are very agile with our technology and we get to adapt to all the latest trends, right? And we put quite a lot of effort and money on R&D. So we learn the market especially with the whole AI movement, what is faster, what can create even more efficient content so that we're always improving. It's interesting because we're going to uh, to talk about uh, how can a hosting platform like uh, Podio help a podcaster to, let's say, to grow uh, the podcast that uh, uh, they launched. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you uh, one thing about uh, what you've just mentioned. So uh, do you have to actually, what is your main selling point when you are selling Podio to creators and do you actually need to sell it? Or taking into consideration the last year growth, what was the major breakthrough? Honestly, it's a, it's a good analysis. Um, when we look back into it, um, the the biggest USP is obviously where we're Arab first. Um, we have the technology that backs it. Um, we have a whole um, team that is actually here to, to hear you and support you. Um, and at the same time, we understand the market and we also have the largest catalog. So we have over 250 podcast shows that we've produced and that are our own exclusives. So already from that arm of experience, we're telling them we truly understand the market. And at the same time, because we have a listening app, we tell you what are the content gaps. So I immediately identify you, um, look how many people are interested in X, look at the search metrics, look at the data entries. So it's a lot of also uh, technical kind of uh, backed data that we're providing to our creators. That's right. Yeah, yeah and that's probably the major, uh, uh, the, the major reason for the fact that the companies are coming to you to create a uh, almost an end-to-end -end, uh, podcast show. Of course, of course. Uh, now let's jump to the question, how can uh, podcasting platforms like Podio mm -hmm. help podcasts to become more successful? Uh, so if, are there any are there any specific features? Apart, like for example, one of them, we could say a data, right? Data that you provide, but data on its own, it's probably not enough. It can guide you in terms of choosing the topic. It can guide you in terms of choosing the format, probably. But then at the end of the day, it's your choice, it's uh, your topic, it's your authenticity, it's your brand, and it's your message, right? So let's start from the point, okay, I've got a data from Podio. Mm -hmm. How else a platform like Podio can help a podcaster, like me, for example, to become more successful in my podcast show? So for us, it's obviously from a hosting perspective, we want to make it as seamlessly as possible. So if you are looking, let's say, on certain deals beyond listening apps, even that's something we can accommodate for. Um, so that's from a distribution channel um, because we've partnered up with different, let's say, gaming apps to airlines, to radios that we've partnered up and given them content, you know, as a barter deal. So it's, I think, you don't have to think just as podcasting as, all right, these are my listener numbers and that's all that it is to it because it goes beyond that. And we're really trying to redefine the listenership reach. So that is one point. And at the same time, we're also allowing and, and putting the right benchmark when it comes to listenerships because the video podcast has a certain listenership. You're competing with YouTube giants, whereas the podcast audio Every different category has a different benchmark. And that is something we've studied and we've set the standards. You know, if you're a society and culture, you have X for this market. So you you and brands need to really know what is, uh, what is a successful story for you. So when you understand your benchmark, you start understanding this was a worth investment. 
you know, I need to invest X so that I can get this uh, basically return on investment and I'm getting this much engagement. So really it's, it's a lot of funnels of uh, not just understanding our data, but also allowing and getting the right reach, but also there should be a business ex- uh, objective behind it. So what we try to also engage with, you know, the people is, you know, what is your CTA? Yeah. You know, are you including certain, let's say, affiliate codes or not? Or are you providing a service or a product? What it is it? What is it that you're actually driving people to? So to measure that success as well is great. So, for example, when the creators are coming uh, to Podium, so are they usually coming with a ready strategy, with a ready call to action, or are you helping them to strategize their calls to actions? Because I think podcasting, especially in a B2B and the corporate space, uh, um, in our region specifically, since I'm dealing with the B2B podcast as well. Mm -hmm. So I think companies need to be helped, need to be guided in terms of how can they integrate podcast into uh, their content and marketing strategy, because uh, they've been doing different things for years. Correct. Yes, we're talking about interviews. Yes, we're talking about content. But this is a different format and different investments, right? So uh, to be able to define the call to action that can help you drive tangible results, you really need to have a partner who can help you. So is this something that Podeo uh, uh, help individual or corporate creators to do? Definitely on both ends. I mean, from the individual creators, you know, part of the add-on services that they choose would be, you know, that would go under curation of how we solve them. At the same time for brands, of course, it's part of the pre-production package that we end up right. giving. And, and as as we're producing the content, right, we put in the strategy there. Uh, we've done that with, with really the largest agencies. We've done that with Publicity uh, Sapien. We've done that with Weber PR. Right. Right. And we've really put in the benchmark of what are the deliverables from each agency? How should brands, you know, the likes of MasterCard, the likes of Pepsi, you know, how should they react when it comes to their... Uh, advertising agencies that handle such a thing. And and really we're coming in on both the client's perspective and educating them and also the agencies on mm-hmm. really what what should you, your deliverables be, right? Yeah. And what should you be, you know, answering. So I think the market has learned a lot, um, has grown a lot and very proud of it. And really, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I applaud every other, you know, production company that is also eager to grow and hungry to kind of create more content. Yeah. You know, because in the end of the day, of course, I'm a tech company. I'm a not, a, not a content creator. Yeah. Right. And uh, I want to be able to enable more production companies, you know, because sometimes people tell us, you know, you know, your competitor is X. And I look at them, I'm like... <laughs> No, you know, there are clients actually, and, and I'm here to support them and lift them. And I want the ecosystem to keep on growing because at the end of the day, the more content creators uh, are on our platform, the more people are hosting with us, the easier for them it is for to monetize. So brands will be spending a budget on the market, uh, on the advertising budgets um, on Podio, be it also for our creators. So we are really solving that ecosystem and I, I primarily really work, we really work on the very large end productions um, in terms of our clients. We do not do this as a, like a daily thing with the, with the startup. So that's yeah. really our main focus because it's, it takes, uh, you know, heavy investment and it's more of a sales strategy for the production. It's to educate the market, yeah. educate the brands on the importance of podcasting. Absolutely. Uh, no, I agree with you that uh, the market needs to be educated in terms of how can they benefit from uh, um, uh, content creation and podcasting is something that uh, we can sort of get in line of the content creation mm-hmm. and the format uh, really works well well nowadays. So um, but let's jump into the question, like, do you have any, let's say, successful brand stories that let's say came to Podio to create their first, their very first podcast show, and then they grew mm-hmm. to a certain extent, and their ROI was well, they were very happy with their ROI eventually. I think I'd, I'd, I could give you a few examples. Yeah, uh, I could look at uh, the Abu Dhabi um, basically investment fund uh, that came to us uh, with their agency and. Uh, 
we help them really develop um, their podcast uh, from ideation stage to production to post-production and even distribution. And um, it was it was really great from their the listeners' numbers. They had a great reach. Uh, and what I loved is that it was in, in Arabic first. We make sure that we invited, you know, Emirati founders as well. Definitely. And, you know, and it, they shared their stories. They shared their success and how, you know, let's say the obstacles they are, you know, for starting up. And then also what funds uh, are available or let's say what um, side things that they can have for them to to get the, the engagement and also to maybe to sell a co- to sell their companies. So it was a really, I mean, it was a really successful podcast. It was called uh, Int Entrepreneur. So Intpreneur. Um, and uh, Int means you in mm-hmm. Arabic. And uh, yeah, we, we we truly saw great numbers with that uh, podcast that had really great reach. And what were the key factors of the success of that show? If you identify like one, two, three, what are the top factors that made it a success? One thing is that the host was extremely eloquent and mm-hmm. he knew how to, he had the right interview tips and knowledge right. and how to kind of convey the conversation. Uh, two is obviously um, the actual guests, their profiles, the, you know, who behind the companies. So really the, the level whenever you are a podcaster, be it an independent podcaster, if you're going to have um, someone being invited, make sure that they also have a large number of followers yeah. so that they can drive that engagement. Know that, and you'll see between the different episodes, certain you know guests get much higher numbers than other guests because of if they're also communicating. So kind of prior to recording, always try to let them know that when you're appearing on this podcast, please be aware to share this episode as well on your channels, giving them the right, you know, pre-date right for the pre-launch so that they know exactly when this is going to go live for them to share it so yeah definitely the distribution is a totally separate project to me uh the whole podcast production uh starts from the ideation first Mm -hmm. so when you're creating a concept and you need to spend enough time to sort of think through the concept and call to action and that's where partners can come uh, to help uh, mm-hmm. to ideate when it comes to a company, uh, even the individual creators. Like, what would be your top advice for individual creators who want to start the podcast? Uh, like next week, tomorrow, next month, they also need to ideate. Uh, so, what would be? And they can't probably. They don't probably have that huge budget to afford a partner. What would you do if you were an individual creator and you wanted to start a podcast show? If I truly, let's say. I knew the idea already. Let's say I wanted to talk about, uh, um, I don't know, let's say motherhood, right? Yeah. And I wanted to talk about maybe the misconception that mother motherhood has. And so I would think about immediately, uh, what's the format of my, in- is it going to be interview based or is it going to be a monologue? So just me on my own. So at least setting the expectations of when it is. Number two is being realistic with yourself because you want to be creating not just one episode, quite a few episodes. You want to create a season and it depends. You want to have it episodic or serial, you know, is it just a seasonal podcast or is it just continuous episodic podcast? So really deciding on the format of it and then saying, all right, if it's going to be, let's say episodic, these are my guests, giving them, you know, enough uh, time to book and then being honest with yourself and saying, all right, every two, you know, I'll do this twice a month. You know, every Saturday I'm going to book my 10 to noon slot, yeah. you know, because you need to know that for, let's say, even a 23 minutes or a 40 minutes interview, you need not just one hour of actually recording time, but also another hour because half an hour prior, half an hour post to actually prep, speak to the guest, uh, collect the data, export the files, mic check, all of that. So being aware that you are really blocking in retrospect between two to three hours of your day for just one episode. That's right. So that is the, the at least the time scale that people truly need to be aware of That's and right. be honest with themselves and say, all right, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to be dedicating. And then that will be part of your content strategy, understanding, let's say, what topics you want to be talking about, addressing them, and just really sharing your voice. And then at the day, you could invest in cameras, you could just do it by audio, you could just plug in a mic or even AirPod to your phone and do it from your, from you know, your the likelihood of, you know, of your home. Yeah. So it's really more about how much you want to invest and uh, what suits you. 
No, I agree with you. So we were talking about the ideation stage and creating the concept. And when you're a B2B, you definitely can. And it is recommended for you to find a partner who can help you to ideate. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can actually commit to create several episodes because that's when it works at its best. There's no point to create only one episode because mm -hmm. actually the first stage is usually the most hardworking, mm -hmm. like the most time consuming. And then the second one you've just mentioned was the production one. So you can, the multiple uh, options and how you can start producing your podcast. You can use a studio like Potster, for example. Exactly. You can uh, record it at your home. You can do audio first uh, podcast, but the production is uh, a stage number two. Mm -hmm. And then stage number three is the distribution, which we touched upon a little earlier. And the distribution is the whole big project that needs to be taken into consideration when you are thinking about your concept because mm -hmm. uh, it involves marketing and social media, it involves the brand, it involves the strategy, it involves your business objectives. And taking all these things into consideration, you can choose the platform to host it on and uh, all the benefits that it can bring you. So, and that is the full story, like the full picture in like three minutes. <laughs> yeah, but I want us to, to, um, to discuss a little more uh, the original podcasting industry, mm -hmm. a little bit on what's growing, what's declining and what has transformed over several years. So if we can get into that, because that's very exclusive knowledge and probably Padilla is in the position to have that data. I think from a creator economy, it's the entire region has been extremely hungry. Uh, I know from our friends at, at Snapchat that they actually test the technology in the US to deliver the, the actual platform for the Saudi market. So the rise of Saudi creators actually, from an even audio perspective, how many women are sharing their stories? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's 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 amazing. I mean, even the women that say that are not comfortable being in front of a camera, right? right. And you know, and they're and they're wearing the niqab, right? And and they're just sharing their voice and sharing their stories and they're getting into all these different topics. And it's it's beautiful to see these these numbers, you know, new creator, new creator, new creator, and they're sharing the different content. And it's it's their way of of redefining, let's say, the, the voice of the Middle East. We've been, we've had so much, I think, um, foreign, you know, journalists and foreign voices speak of the Middle East and define what it is. Yeah. But it's really beautiful to see finally that, you know, Arabs are taking the mic, Arabs are sharing their stories. And be it whether it's an independent podcaster or it's a brand, they're finally sharing what they want to without that prejudice, right? Because, you know, the camera's there, they're looking at me, they're probably thinking and, and putting that let's say, um, unfortunately, it, it does, sometimes video does that, right? It has kind of like, all right, she's this, you know, we don't know how much she knows, how many podcasts has she actually brought up? What is she talking about? Is she an expert? Is she not? So there's a lot of maybe misconceptions. Oh, she's pregnant. She maybe should not be doing a, a video podcast now. You know, is she not tired? I'm sure there's a lot of different thoughts people think about when they see video. Yeah. But the power of audio is that it blocks that, you know? And, and I've done that so many times. I've gone to, you know, conferences. And before I even come on stage, I start telling them, you know, this is my voice. And I want you to try to imagine how I would look like. You know, I start telling them, I used to play professional football. You know, from even, you know, I played for the national team. I've played in Germany. I've played in England. And I tell them, I'm also a software developer. You know, I've written code. And then I start telling them, I've even modeled at one point. And then I go on and I've done a TV show in the US. So they start probably building this character Who's this girl? Is she stroffy? Is she buff? Is she what? And then I come out and they're like, oh, okay. I mean, just an average, you know, everyday, you know, the everyday Joe, right? You know, you don't look butchy or whatnot. If they, you know, if they assimilate, you know, the image of a football girl to, to look like that or even a software developer. So you have the benefits and cons. There's a lot of cons on audio. Yeah. There's a lot of negative stuff on, on, uh, on video. There's definitely a lot of demand for video because people are like, it's important. They look at the YouTube success. They look at the YouTube creators. And unfortunately, everybody's directly saying, I want to monetize from the first day. It doesn't work like that. 
you really need to create content. YouTubers do not monetize from the first day. Of course. Day. You need a thousand subscribers on YouTube before you start monetizing and opt in for monetizing. So it's it's a different kind of benchmark of what people are expecting. They're expecting immediate results. Same thing with their numbers, their listener numbers. And I try to explain to them, just give your content more time because some of our most successful podcasts, we have we have Noor Imam that had The Mother Being, it's an Egyptian podcast. And she was just featured last year by the New York Times about right. how revolutionizing her podcast was and how yeah. great it's doing. And she's gotten such numbers. She's our number one podcaster as, right. an, as an independent podcaster. And she's built a brand behind it, she started selling products behind it, you know, from being that podcaster, right? So there's a lot of benefits and there's a lot of, let's say, um, reach, but you need to be patient, mm -hmm. right? So from an individual perspective, give it time. Do not expect immediate numbers from the first month. You know, as you grow episode, episode, you start learning your content strategy and you adapt better and you reach your target audience. So what I'm uh, uh, sort of to, to conclude this point about what has been changed or how, how has podcasting transformed in the Middle East is probably the variety of different creators, mm -hmm. including uh, women and the audio first podcasting actually allowed women to get that voice and to speak up about things that are relevant for women. So this is a number one thing that is coming in to the region and you anticipate that it's going to grow. And this hungriness for putting your voice out there is probably what's going to drive the podcasting industry in the Middle East to grow. So this is number one point that I've captured. That's and number correct. two is at the interest towards video as well. Definitely. I mean, there's there's a lot of interest in video and a lot of people, let's say, maybe are deterred um, not to do video because of the cost implications, right? I mean, you guys have done a great job here at Podster. You know, you've made it very cheap uh, and, you know, not cheap as in like, you know, bad quality, but very affordable for people affordable, to start, you yes. know? Very affordable to people to start a podcast. But at the same time, I always recommend, let's say, certain even brands that don't want to spend on, on videos. And I explain to them, it's not an issue. You could still record, use your setup, you know, your video setup, but do not record the entire video, right? Use snippets, use them as marketing, you know, YouTube shorts, you know, marketing, marketing hooks to yeah. kind of engage with your audience, share certain, you know, hot topics or hot questions that you maybe you want to engage your audience to, to talk about. So that is how I would recommend it if you don't want to do the whole video productions. Um, you know, from the whole one hour, let's say, of, of the interview. So that's how I recommend it. Yeah, so uh, that was my next point. So if you, for example, uh, could give your opinion about, uh, you know, the video podcasting, because Podstay is definitely um, a video first uh, studio. We've, we do have the audio recordings as well in a very nice and comfortable uh, setup. So you can um, record your video, your, your audio podcast here. But Podstay has been founded and and created as uh, a video first uh, studio. And uh, so uh, how do you think, is it gonna grow? Is the requirement for video uh, podcasting gonna grow? And uh, why do you think it's gonna happen? It really depends on the creators themselves. Some creators are not comfortable in front of the camera. Some guests don't wanna ever be on the camera. So you have to take that into consideration from let's say, a certain um, certain guests that are coming from different cultures. If you're looking at more of the the foreign culture, uh, you know the expats community, you would see yes, definitely that be sometimes more comfortable being in front of the camera. But you also have to take the cultural element where maybe maybe their partners, their fathers would not be comfortable. That's you right, know, being on camera. So you have to take kind of a step back from 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 that angle. Um, some people like the you know you know, the, the media and the fame, and some people really are not comfortable with it. So again, it goes down to the importance of that and how comfortable you are to, to putting your guests on, on the spot. And the other kind of thought that I would have to think about is the region is, is thriving with stories, right? I That's think right. there's so much to share. Yeah. And certain stories uh, should be kept on audio only, and they don't need visual support. 
you know, you know, same thing as books. Why do books? Why are books there? You know, right? You know, and it becomes versus, a movie, <laughs> right? You know, and and why is Netflix there, right? And you know, and Netflix is you know, uh, you know, it's video stories, you know, uh, on video. So I think there's room for both. It's not competing. Yeah, it's really what um, the you know the certain brand strategy has or the certain creator has a vision for. Because an audio podcast, in the end of the day, you know, a podcast is, is audio on demand. Yeah. That is the definition of a podcast. Of course. Yeah. You know, um, so it's really, it, it could be a news article that's, you're just listening to, maybe combined with some animation even, um, but it doesn't always have to be filmed. So it really is, it varies so much on, on the landscape and, and there's, there's space for both really. I don't see it as a, as a competing thing. I agree with you. Uh, I can share my own sort of um, uh, opinion about, not opinion, a feeling, let's say, a thought, a reflection on, um, since I've been doing video only, and I can say video mm -hmm. is definitely uh, an effort. It's mm -hmm. a much bigger effort from the point of view of how you're positioned and how you're talking and how you look as well, because you, you want video to look good mm -hmm. and uh, so you it's great to have a partner who can help you to do that it's usually not as easy to set it up at home uh, I would say definitely the message that you're delivering and the guests that you're bringing is a very strong factor in terms of how successful you're going to become and if keeping consistent is easier for you to do it let's say in an audio environment then probably this is the way to go and uh, to use the video for example set up only for the critical interviews for example or something that you really want to capture on a camera but I think when it comes to B2B space mm -hmm. uh, brands especially the B2B brands uh, uh, they usually uh, uh, they usually require an extra effort to bring a lot more human connection there. And in this case, in my opinion, a video interview helps a lot. When, for example, an interview represents a brand, not just an individual creator. And in this case, I think a video interview can help a lot. That's just my personal feeling, thought, reflection in terms of what I saw and how it works. No, I, I definitely agree with you. I think there's two elements. Some brands are going and getting a host that is not affiliated with the brand. It could be just any host. That's true. And, and getting, let's say, their guests that are, you know, whether clients or people that they admire, that they'd like to be part of this kind of realm. And then you have some clients that actually engage their internal stakeholders. And I always really advise that. I advise it because... It's, it's beautiful and it's nice to see the partners, the CEOs, even the executives actually engaging, sitting and sharing what they do, what's behind their business, what are their learnings, what are their reports, um, what is efficiency in this, uh, you know, in this marketplace. Because at the end of the day, the content will always exist and it's going to be online forever. So the, the beauty of that is that no matter what, people will always be consuming that audio or video and learning, you know, learning about this new market, learning about this new business. So it's it's really beneficial. So I always prefer engage with your partners and with your team and at the same time um, help them. You know, the agencies were here. You guys are here as well. We aid them and we kind of let them get comfortable, you know, in front of the mic, get them comfortable in front of the camera to really share the tonality as well of how they want to address something. No, absolutely. Just to add a point mm -hmm. to uh, the B2B podcasting that we discussed, I think it's a very important uh, uh, in the era of uh, artificial intelligence when content can be created by different tools. And I mean, there's nothing wrong in involving AI into your mainstream content creation mm -hmm. as a brand. But then things like video and the interview can help brands to become more human, more life, to become more connected to the audience because the audience eventually would like to see the faces of the brand. And I think that's where video is really, really critical. So as you write, um, and as you mentioned, there's room for both, uh, for video and audio. And I'm happy that we are talking about a thing that is trending, that is buzzing, and that is growing in the region and globally. And... Um, um, 
So if you uh, if you were to wrap up today's conversation mm-hmm. uh, about podcasting in the Middle East, about Podeo, so what would be your main message to the brands and to your individual creators out there who are keen to continue or to start their own podcast? If I were to address brands um, as firm, foremost, uh, I would definitely say make sure, you know, obviously... It is an extremely hot trend currently, but it's no longer a trend. It became a need. So prior it was people were thinking and it was more of a want in the industry. And now it's really became a need. Your competitors have podcasts. Everybody has podcasts. So, you know, if in the region they haven't started, at least your global presence as an agency, as a brand, they already have podcasts. So get on, get on it, you know, fixate if you need help externally from an agency there are many around in the region and if not try to sit with your marketing team put a budget in place and action it uh, and don't be afraid i mean there's a lot of let's say different quotations around make sure to get several so that you have clear kind of overview of the marketplace of what you truly need that's right yeah yeah just to start with definitely mm-hmm. for individual creators it's really like i said earlier um you know whichever format you feel more comfortable with, whether it's audio or it's video, um, just start, you know, think about your content strategy, make sure you are unique and true to yourself. And at the same time, maintain that same tonality with your voice, right? What is your podcast voice? You know, you know, find it, get comfortable with it. Lots of trial and error. And, uh, and the rest is really easy. You know, it's, uh, it's just another medium really that you, that you're sharing. So. I think the main message is that the ecosystem is there in place to mm-hmm. help podcasters to start, continue and grow with their podcast and monetize eventually. Be it an individual creator or be it a company, the ecosystem is in place to help you. So I want to ask you one more question. So what's your favorite podcast? Ooh, um, it's actually in Arabic uh, and it's called Tanafus. And it's, uh, he's a Saudi podcaster and his voice is on another level. Um, it's extremely soothing. And I mean, I was born and raised in Saudi Arabia and uh, something about his uh, podcast is extremely, it, it connects me kind of back home. It also makes me feel like really relaxed. So I truly enjoy his, his podcast from, I mean, there's, there's so many around that it's, it's hard to kind of pick and choose. Um, there's some seasonal podcasts that come out of nowhere, you know, Um, and yeah. Speaking about the topic, so what's trending uh, uh, among listeners uh, nowadays? What do what kind of topics do people prefer to listen to? Uh, is there any theme that is more popular than the other? I mean, the, the number one genre in, genre in the region is society and culture. Really? Uh, and then beyond that, you go with education and business. Um, and then it, it trends, right? You know, your keyword searches, let's call them, right? Uh, month per month, you know, for Ramadan, we had amazing numbers for our Ramadan collection of, of stories that we've had shared, beautiful VO narrated content um, that people were constantly listening to. I have one podcast that is you know, about crime and it was launched maybe two years ago and I still have extremely high listeners numbers on it. So I think general public, you know, whether it's current, right? If it's a short shelf life content or it's long shelf life content, know that there's a space for, for both really. That's right. And uh, uh, so in terms of the Arabic uh, content and let's say any, any other language content, so what, would you, so what would you say? What is the balance? Uh, is there a way to keep the balance? Do we need to create more in Arabic, more in English, more in French? I think for the region, um, you could think of Um, there's three times more listenership than in Arabic content in the region. So you're getting a much higher reach in Arabic content really? for brands and individual creators. The, 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 the numbers are really, really big. Right. Um, whereas, I mean, you have 450 million Arabic speakers worldwide. So my listeners are not just here in the region. My listeners are in Australia or in South America or in the Definitely. US, you know, are all over Europe. So it's a very large uh, reach. And then you have to think about also the uh, the English creators. So for the English creators, you're looking at a marketplace of around 100 and, no, no, it was 250,000 uh, shows that have more than 
10 episodes and that are only in English. Mm-hmm. So you're competing technically Definitely. with all of those players, right? And there's difference, right? You're competing with the free version content and you could also be competing with the subscription content, which is also hidden numbers. Yeah. So I think there's there, there's quite of play. Uh, I think the region should... Um, let's say definitely maybe, especially in the community here, you could invest in Tagalo podcasts and, and really, really come up with uh, that community and strive for content for them. Look for Urdu as well for that, you know, region. It's a huge marketplace. And and really think of what is your niche and don't just fixate on just English. There's so many languages out there that have maximum reach. We have one client, I'm sure you know, Daniela uh, from the Unlimited podcast, and she's starting a podcast in Italian. And she has her niche, she wants to do it, and there's a you know Italian community that she wants to address to. And I said, go ahead and go be it and do it. Uh, amazing, amazing. If you were to start your own podcast tomorrow, mm-hmm. what would it be? Ooh, I've been wanting to, honestly. Um, and, um, and I haven't been fair to myself uh, on, on the time management, let's say. Um, if I truly wanted to share something, um, I would like to share um, maybe life stories and gratitude. And I want to stop hearing, um, like, because I'm a woman, you know, I'm a woman and this, this kind of like narrative of just woman. And whereas I'm just a human being, yes, I am a woman. I'm very proud to be a woman, but when I'm working, I'm also one of the team members. I do not want to be labeled as she's the woman. Right. Right. So I'm just tired of that narrative of, women's stories and women's success stories. I'm, you know, I, this kind of benchmark of constantly having to, you know, prove you're great. I know I'm great. I don't need you to tell me that I've done great. So it's this kind of, I feel like it's a condescending kind of behavior towards us when it comes to, you know, how well we are at work, how well we are at home, how we're juggling everything. So I think it's that kind of angle that I'd like to kind of normalize you know, and, interesting. Uh, no, I definitely about. think this is uh, a very interesting niche uh, about, let's say, gender equity or something. I mean, call it, call it a gender equity. But yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely something that I would listen to as well. Mm, super. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lama. It's been uh, an interesting conversation, a lot of interesting data, a lot of interesting insights that you've shared today. I'm happy we're partnering with podium and i hope this is not our last conversation for sure definitely not stay tuned thank you and congratulations <laughs> again yeah congratulations <laughs> that's so precious thank you dear thanks yeah let's take care dear